How easy is it for a hacker to hack your security camera? That's gonna be today's challenge. I'm gonna be driving around this neighborhood to see if I can find a home with a security camera and then try hack it. I'm gonna show you from a hacker's point of view what they do so that you know how to protect yourself and your camera system. This may work or it may not because this one isn't so simple. Let's do this. You've got to excuse the shaky camera work. I'm trying to be sneaky here. I don't want to be posted on the neighborhood Facebook group, but I think I've just acquired a target. Now, back to the studio. As a hacker, there are a few challenges that I first need to overcome. In order to access the camera, I need to know its IP address so that I could hack it. But the challenge is, how do I get that IP address? I think the answer is gonna boil down to old school dumpster diving. This is where we look in their recycling bin to see if there's anything that we can use, such as their cell phone number or an email address. And we can use that for some phishing. Ideally, an invoice would have that or a cell phone bill. If I can find out their cell phone number, I could then send them a text message with a link. And if they fall for that, I'm gonna get their IP address. Uh, Bad news, with everything being online these days, there was no cell phone bill, but as you saw, I did find a smart bulb that they threw away. And most people don't know that this could be a treasure trove of information. We're gonna get onto that shortly. Right now, I'm gonna have to go to plan number two, and that is attacking their Wi-Fi. I'm gonna use my Linux laptop here to see if I can work out what their Wi-Fi name is. If I can get into the Wi-Fi, then I can kind of work my way around and find their camera. Eventually. Uh... To respect their privacy, I'm obviously not gonna show you what I did, but I can tell you that this house made two critical mistakes. The first is that they named their Wi-Fi with their home number. That allowed me to home in on the right network. The second mistake they made was use an old password encryption called WEP, W-E-P, which is super simple to get into. Now, if they did use something that's much more secure, I could probably still get in, but it's a whole different complicated, you gotta capture handshakes, uh, it's a bit of a nightmare. But usually still doable. Right, now that I'm in their Wi-Fi, all I have to do is find the camera system itself. And for that, I did this. I'm gonna use a good old command called nmap, which essentially is going to map out their entire network, both hardwired devices and Wi-Fi devices, and show me any ports that are open and identify any devices that I could attack. Now, whilst nmap is doing its thing, which could take a little bit of time, depending on how many devices are connected to their network, Remember that smart light? Well, what I did was send it off to my buddy who loves to hack hardware IoT devices. I checked in with him to see whether he got any information off the smart light bulb and yeah. So my buddy is not so keen to share his exact processes, but there is a wonderful article that literally breaks down step-by-step -step instruction of how IoT devices, Internet of Things, such as your smart light bulb, how it contains so much information. And if you can hook it up to the right system as this article lays out step-by-step -step, and you have the ability and the know-how, you can actually extract the Wi-Fi credentials which are stored in plain text. Also goes to show, even if you have a super strong password and a super strong encryption on your Wi-Fi, if you're throwing away those devices, you're throwing away information that we can read. Okay, back to Nmap. He has finished scanning and now I've got access to all their devices on their network. I can see the ports, I can see the IP addresses, and one of them is actually called camera. And next to the camera, it gives me the IP address of that. Right, I now have the IP address, which means the next thing I'm going to do is put that into a web browser. Let's see if I can gleam any information from that. Okay, right click on the address, copy, open up a web browser, paste it in, and there we go, net surveillance web. So I couldn't log in, but I did get a critical bit of information, the type of system that they have. And all I'm gonna do now is use Uncle Google to find out more. 
Okay, so a quick Google search. It reveals that it is an app for smartphones that allows you to live view your cameras remotely. So I'm definitely on the right track here. Let's scroll further down. Oh, look at this, Net Surveillance Web Default Password. So I scroll down, anything exciting here to read? There we go. The default password for the Net Surveillance DVR system, the username is admin, or I can put that in. That is called a SQL injection. Interesting. Let me see if there's anything else on the page here. Alternative password, no password at all. Username admin and the password is simply blank. Let's see if that works. Moment of truth. Okay, here we go. Hi, I am in. This is their security camera which is a pan, tilt, and zoom type of system. So on this web page is a whole bunch of personal information, that's so I'm blurring that out, but I'm in. Now imagine if this was an inside camera. That is just madness to me. Now obviously I reached out to them. Lovely couple who just didn't know that this was possible. I helped them secure their system, we changed the encryption protocol, they chose a super complicated password and they also gave me permission to show this but of course their privacy must be respected, which it has. To me this is pretty shocking because we have outside cameras but many of us also have indoor cameras and this is where things get worse. Now remember, this was a local attack. In other words, I needed to be in the proximity of their Wi-Fi to get into their system. But what about hacking remotely? Well, the answer is even more shocking. There are websites that expose camera vulnerabilities and you can even search for very specific devices. That means hackers can be anywhere in the world with an internet connection and try get into your security camera. And if that is even too complicated, if you type the right Google search, there are cameras that are connected to the web that you can access. So how do you secure your home cameras? What should you be checking for? Well, firstly, ensure that your Wi-Fi is secure. Make sure that you use the latest and strongest encryption that your Wi-Fi router allows and use a long, complicated password so no one can crack it. You should never name your Wi-Fi with something that can pinpoint your house or your last name or anything to do with you. Make sure you change your camera's default username and password. Ideally, remove it from the system altogether and just add a new user. Again, use a complicated password that is not the same as your network password. And if your camera has that option, use two-factor authentication so that if somebody tries to get in, you're gonna know all about it immediately. Go through the list of people who have access to your cameras. Do you recognize each one of those? There's recently been a case where an ADT installer added his own username and password that allowed him to log into all the cameras he installed. An installer does not need access once they leave, no matter what they tell you. Make sure you have the latest firmware update on your system. We're so busy updating our computers and our phones, we tend to forget about our security cameras. Companies find vulnerabilities and then they issue software updates in order to close those vulnerabilities. Most people simply don't check and hackers know that, so they look for old vulnerable cameras that have not been updated and they simply get in. If your camera has a brand name written all over it, make sure that you put masking tape over that name. Why make it easy for a hacker to know what kind of camera it is? They could then just simply Google the vulnerability for that camera and get into your system. Hackers make good money selling your private information. There was a hacker group that specialized in hacking cameras, sold lifetime access at $150, and that gave its members over 4,000 clips of outdoors and indoor camera footage, including, well, you can let your mind go what it included. And please use a complicated password for everything. Look at how easy I can crack password right over here, or check out this video that YouTube thinks you should watch, Hit the head down here to subscribe and let's get to that million subs. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in this video or in this video or I'll see you in both. Let's go.